Hey, uh, ladies and gents, very good evening. Uh, I am told by the organizer that uh, we should start first because uh, people are moving around the different workshops uh, and uh, we've got a simple cocktail uh, session prepared uh, for after this. So if you want to have some of the goodies we got, uh, stick around, all right? <laughs> Um, anyway, we're going to keep this very casual and uh, informal. Um, very good evening. My name is Nigel. Uh, I'm currently the president for MATA, which is the Malaysian Association for Tour and Travel Agents. Uh, we recently conducted the famous MATA Fair, so my apologies for causing congestion in KL City. We are working on more sustainable solutions in the future. Uh, hopefully, we will have our trains up and running in another two years. Right. Um, but jokes aside, though, we are actually very happy to be here today because um, apart from running Mata Fairs together with our industry partners, uh, we have all realized the importance of uh, being in that sustainability conversation uh, early rather than later uh, so that we can also contribute you know, to where our, countries, uh, where our country is heading, <coughs> our net uh, uh, carbon emissions goal in 2050, and more importantly, la, making sure that our tourism industry remains relevant and vibrant. Um, so with me today, uh, in no particular order, uh, we have uh, Mr. Yusno Yunos on my left. He is the CEO and founder of Evanesis, um, and he is also the Vice President for Innovation for Masios, which is the Malaysian Association of Convention and Exhibition Organizers and Suppliers. I had to ask him for his card because uh, I, I, I can never remember the, the, the letters, you know. Yeah, but Masio sounds really cool, right? Um, and of course, we have the pleasure today of having Puan uh, Rahimah uh, Farjan Ali, who is the Head Global Sustainability Office for the Malaysian Aviation Group. Um, we could not get a speaker from the Malaysian Association of Hotels today because I think their schedule is a bit full up. Um, but to set the context for today's discussion or masterclass, right, uh, what we want to do is just give everybody here a very brief idea of where we are in terms of our sustainability journey, the various organizations, and more importantly, what we think needs to be done quickly in order to meet those, uh, you know, those sustainability goals which we all have. Um, so maybe just to kick up the session, um, I'll go first, right? Thank you, my colleagues. Um, and what I'm going to do is just give you a brief overview of where the travel and tour operators are in our sustainability journey today and where we see this thing going. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to be very liberal with my use of the word sustainable and green. No intent to greenwash here, all right? It's just that green is very identifiable with our Malaysian audience especially. Um, so. Uh, today, I'm just going to really give you a brief overview about what MATA is and its members, uh, our current initiative and insights. Uh, we have an initiative called the Green Circle Initiative, which is meant to uh, basically educate the industry and prepare them for you know, formal accreditation and certification, uh, and to also you know, get our hands a little bit dirty. Uh, we're also going to give you a brief uh, overview on the industry readiness. We did a survey of about 200 companies recently, and the survey is ongoing. Uh, and also to give you an update uh, as to what MATA itself is doing to uh, advance the nation's sustainability agenda. Next slide, please. So for those of you who do not know MATA, uh, we are the national uh, travel uh, organization recognized as such. We are the largest uh, 2,700 companies or members and growing. This does not include our associate and affiliate members as well. Uh, we pride ourselves in being connected globally through some of our sister networks, uh, the ASEAN networks uh, in Europe through ECTA, WTA and the WTAAA. And what we do is we actually look at all the different areas of um, uh, travel and tourism uh, we are very strong in our inbound and domestic. Uh, we also are a big proponent of outbound travel. It has to be two ways. Uh, we focus on air transportation, land transportation issues. Uh, we are heavily into education and training, research, and of course, we do look out for our Umrah and Hajj players as well. So basically, we look at the travel uh, line across the board. Um, Maybe just a bit of a shout out. This year we had 1,590 booths at the recent Mata Fair with about 250 registered 
uh, exhibitors from all over the world. Uh, and Mata spans the entire country with uh, chapters in every state. And so this is how we reach out to our local uh, travel agent uh, members. Next slide. Um, okay, so a few quick numbers here. Courtesy of the GSTC, uh, which is the Global uh, Sustainability Tourism Council, uh, we are looking at global tourism growth. I think we've all felt it in one way or another. Just a quick question. Uh, how many of you are actually from the uh, industry? You are travel agents, uh, tour operators. Just see a quick show of hands. Okay, we have a few here. All right, and just to get the feel of it, uh, conventions. I know I see a big group behind conventions, right? And uh, aviation. Okay, so you have the whole floor today, all right? Um, okay, so we've all felt the growth in tourism. And as you can see from the slide there, it's on an upward trend. Uh, the main thing is that by 2030, UNWTO forecasts international tourist arrivals globally to reach 1.8 billion. Now, that's a figure that has been unheard of uh, before. And until COVID 2019, all right, we haven't seen such a jump in numbers. And uh, it was predicted as such after COVID, but it's actually happening. All right, next slide. <coughs> Now, why does this number matter? Because out of the 1.8 billion people traveling and all the industries that are involved in this uh, area, right, uh, tourism itself, through many, many different facets, is currently responsible for 11% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And so it is very, very important that the tourism and travel industry, predominantly made up of SMEs, uh, start to take the sustainability issue very, very seriously. All right. Next slide. Um, now, the GCI, the Green Circle Initiative, as an introduction, is something that MATA is doing together with our various partners. Uh, of note, some of the key associations, which is MA, MASIOS, uh, and uh, where do we have MAG. These are our key partners here. Uh, we are also working together uh, with advice from Datin Sunita from, uh, from CGM. Uh, we do partner with MyTech, where we hold the Mata Fairs. We have financial partners, uh, RHB, MDEC, as well as some partners from the media. Now, why I've showed this slide is because we understand that unless we get together in a collaborative uh, effort, uh, no one association or organization is going to really be able to make a difference when we're talking about our national sustainability agenda. All right, next slide. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of shameless promotion here. This T-shirt which I'm wearing is uh, a original piece by our artist friend all the way from the UK, Rachel Gray. Uh, she's actually sitting over there. So if you want to autograph later, she's right there. Okay. Um, now, the reason why we're doing this is because we're using works like this to raise awareness among the public as well as among our own industry members of the need to tackle sustainability in different areas of tourism. So in short, Mata is looking at conservation as a way uh, to not only protect what we have, but to encourage local tourism uh, businesses, especially those run by local communities. For example, the uh, Orang Asli in the Balloon Rainforest. All right, to look at tourism, not poaching, all right, not deforestation or logging, as a viable and lucrative source of income. Right? Now, we're also going to be working very closely uh, soon, hopefully, with the Women's Community and Family Ministry to look at training underprivileged women all right, to be part of the tourism workforce. But that's for another day. Next slide. So this is just some of the initiatives we've done. We've done this promotion overseas. We've done it locally. Next slide. Um, just a quick story here before we get into some of the meteor slides. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do is during COVID, uh, the local community in the Balloon Rainforest cultivated a 1.5 kilometer stretch of river, saying that they will not fish from this particular stretch of river, and they wanted to turn it into a uh, catch and release program all right, to attract tourists, and the fish there are huge. Okay, Very, very interesting. Um, and what we are doing as Mata is we're looking at going in, not just to support them with funding for infrastructure, but to also look at helping them structure and create packages and products that we, as responsible travel operators and travel agents, will then promote and sell to the rest of the world. 
All right? So this is one of the practical ways that Mata is assisting in uh, you know, um, helping some of these local communities. Uh, next slide. Okay, going into uh, a bit of some interesting facts here. Uh, this survey, a report done by Booking.com, published in the TTG Weekly 2023 report, actually shows a very interesting trend. If you look at the top right corner, our lowest hanging fruits, as far as Malaysia is concerned, China and India, are being, uh, there are more conscious, sustainable conscious uh, travellers that are emerging from these markets. So it's actually a good thing that we are currently focusing on these two markets as well. But we also need to be mindful that while at the moment these travellers are not actively, say, precluding destinations that aren't sustainable, they may do so in the very near future. Right? Now, another interesting thing to note is we've also been engaging very closely with our European counterparts. They are facing the same issues that we're facing here. While, uh, green, uh, while, while legislation in the EU is very strong, it is still the same problem. SMEs are not able to get on board you know, with these uh, sustainability programs simply because of lack of ed uh, funding, lack of infrastructure, or lack of awareness. Right? And so this is something that we have to look uh, deep into as far as tourism is concerned. Next slide. Okay, some more interesting stats. Uh, you can see here 78% of APEC travellers say they want to travel more sustainably in the next 12 months. This is also a research done by Booking.com. 57% uh, intend to reduce energy consumption. Now, I have friends who actually uh, are pedantic enough to turn everything off even in the middle of winter, all right, heaters and such, I don't know how they do it, just so that they can conserve electricity, right? And we're we're getting to the point where a lot of younger travelers are very, very conscious of what they do. Now, 54% intend to use more sustainable modes of transport. So I found the previous um, session with Proton fairly interesting because one of the areas that we need to tackle urgently is the availability of clean uh, energy transportation, especially on land uh, in Malaysia. And finally, of course, 45% feel guilty when they make less sustainable travel choices. I hope some of the 45% are here in this room. <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, 70% uh, of Asia-Pacific travellers say they want to leave places better than when they first arrived. And 73% of APEC travellers say they want to leave the places they visit uh, okay, that's in 2024, all right? So you can see a 3% rise, and this trend is uh, going to continue. All right, next slide. Okay, so those are the global stats. Now, how do they apply to the travel industry? While you look at some of the numbers and the survey that we've done with our own member organizations, it must, uh, I must make it a point to say here that as far as travel agents are concerned, working together in collaboration with the rest of the supply chain, we are ambassadors. So for those of you who are travel agents here today, our role is to make sure that when we start to sell these new products and services, create these new packages, that we have to be more cognizant of what goes into that packaging. You know, are the hotels that we work with sustainable? Are the airlines that we fly with sustainable as well? Are the suppliers that we engage, do they have a sustainability program or guidelines? You know? And only then are we going to be able to truly say that you know, tourism and travel here in Malaysia or the packages we sell are going to be green. Now, why is this important? Engaging with our counterparts overseas again, EU is pushing very hard on their legislation to ensure that any other supplier in the rest of the world that they will engage in in the next 10 years must have some sort of uh, accreditation or standards when it comes to being sustainable. And this does not preclude the tourism industry. Uh, so some of our friends from the Netherlands, they are already pushing very, very hard for this legislation to be implemented, not only in the Netherlands, but the whole of the EU. Right? And so uh, they've already told us in the next 10 years, uh, things are going to change probably quite dramatically. Right? So as you can see from here, a survey of our own members indicate that uh, many of them have already, in their own way, started trying to be more sustainable within their own operations. Right, next slide. Now, we also asked them what they thought the industry would benefit uh, or whether the industry would benefit from increased sustainability. And again, as you can see from the green and the pink uh, bars there, 
in general, more than half of them are in agreement that our tourism industry will definitely benefit from uh, more sustainable practices. Next slide. Uh, we did also ask them to rank the importance of uh, you know, different sustainable practices and services and how that mattered to them. And as you can see, uh, many of them have also indicated that uh, you know, uh, they are also fairly aware of many of the things that need to be done in order to be more sustainable. However, we also see from the orange bars there that uh, some of them are still sitting on the fence. Now, when we did this survey, we did ask many of our agents what was the, uh, where, where we were lacking. And next slide. So, they've indicated basically that training and education was going to be key in ensuring that our uh, organizations were more sustainable. Financial incentives were also high on the list. And I think one of the reasons we're having this discussion today is that uh, as an industry, we need to work together to petition the government, all right, to put a little bit more emphasis and focus into tourism-related uh, sustainable infrastructure. At the moment, it's all over the place. Yes, we've got clean energy, we're looking at electric vehicles, but there's a lot more that needs to be done as far as local communities, the men on the ground is concerned, before we can really claim to be truly sustainable in our tourism practices. Now, the third... Would partnerships with sustainable suppliers be beneficial for a business? Now, this actually indicates that we do realize that our supply chain needs to be sustainable in order for us to say we are selling sustainable products. Last but not least, many of them think that government policies, uh, the right ones, uh, and support would facilitate sustainability efforts. So the key thing here is that we need to be able to have a larger say in that conversation with the government all right, to tell them this is what we want uh, as far as tourism's contribution to the national sustainability agenda is concerned. All right, next slide. So the current implementation is over half of our members are already implementing uh, sustainable services. Uh, there is a big need uh, uh, for support. 30-35% uh, are somewhat ready, but they need that additional support. Uh, and while Mata is be able to provide workshops, training and consulting, uh, we will be relying on our partners also to be a part of that conversation and training. Uh, there is also strong support for training programs, financial incentives. So for those of you here who are in the financial sector, who may not be in the tourism sector, we need your help uh, in uh, being a part of that uh, initiative. Um, and finally, we need to focus on targeted education, resources and partnership to enhance the sustainability drive. Next. Um, before I conclude, uh, what Mata is currently doing uh, is along the lines of what our members have already requested in the effort to educate and to uh, empower our members. Uh, we recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the GSTC and we will be working with this organization uh, to develop uh, guidelines and standards that our members can easily apply uh, and, and uh, you know, engage in small, manageable steps so that ultimately they're going to be ready to take the next big leap of accreditation and certification. Okay, next slide. Uh, just for information, this is what the GC, uh, GSTC criteria are. They have four pillars of sustainability covering management, social and economic, cultural and environment. And I think the last slide coming up. So what is MATA's initiative? And this is where we can always get on board and work with one another. Number one, we are currently cultivating talent and building awareness. So this is not just training and workshops, but we are working with the local universities to develop or help them further develop their syllabus uh, to train uh, the new generation of tourism workers. We are also looking at setting the standard through a simple process of gamification together with the GSTC, maybe 12 or 15 points that are easily achievable. Uh, and once our agents or members have achieved that, uh, those small milestones, by then they should have enough confidence and perhaps enough awareness to then embark on a formal certification program, which as you can see would be somewhere along the middle of that journey. Uh, we don't particularly promote any particular uh, framework we just want to encourage our members to take that next big leap of faith. 
Uh, finally, of course, it is Mata's intention to also help, together with his partners, drive public policy as far as the sustainability conversation is concerned. And last but not least, what's the use of putting everything on paper if you don't get down in the dirty and do the work yourselves, right? And so this is where RCSR projects come in. Next slide. So for those of you here today who are interested in having a more engaging conversation with us about this, you can contact uh, our team leads, uh, Pal uh, and Sofian, who are here today. Uh, Pal is there, Sofian is over there. So uh, at the networking session later, please feel free to engage them. We're happy to welcome partners on board. Now, I believe I have almost bored you to death with that really long presentation. I guarantee you my fellow speakers are far more engaging. And so without further ado, I'm going to pass the stage over to Mr. Yusno for the next part of the presentation. Thanks, Nigel. Assalamualaikum. Very good afternoon. Um, all right. How many of you have heard about Masios? Besides the Masios member in the house, I know it's a long... Uh, it's a short acronym, but the, the, the actual full name of Masios is Malaysian Association of Convention and Exhibition Organizers and Suppliers. Have you guys heard about us before? No? Yes? Good. And maybe you're wondering how are we related to the tourism industry? Why are we here? I'm going to answer that very soon. Maybe we can go to the next slide. Well, we've been around for quite some time, as you can see. Um, and those are the four pillars of the association. So we have IDEA, IDEA. So my name is Yusno. I represent the uh, innovation team or innovation pillar. I'm the vice president of that pillar. And we also have development, education, and advocacy. So what do we do? We do events. So it's a whole uh, ecosystem of players who are involved in business events mainly. All right, next. So our industry is a bit unique. As you can see, the ecosystem is huge because it is not just the organizers. It involves people who own this place, the venue. Yeah, you can see the operators and all the other suppliers from the stand contractors, logistics players, um, technology, AV, furniture, you name it, because any event would not be complete without these players. So these are our members. And how are we related to tourism? Can anyone answer that? How are we related to tourism? So the attendees or the participants or the delegates of our shows, our conferences, are tourists. These are business tourists. So if you think about it, they would have to travel, they would have to stay in a hotel, they would spend, right, for souvenirs, they would eat at a lot of these fancy restaurants, and then pre and post event, they will have tours. Right, so it's not indirectly, directly, this industry is contributing huge, in a huge amount to the tourism industry. Okay, so, that's basically the intro of the association. Can we go to the next slide? A bit about, yeah, our uh, basically roadmap until 2030. So at the end of the day, we have to recognize that BE is vital for nation building. Okay, can you go to the next one? Yeah. So this is basically what we are striving for to ensure our members benefit. So whoever that is running events, the suppliers who are uh, going through this with us, we want, to actual, we want to make sure, ensure that we are able to do more, yeah, uh, generating more uh, GDP growth, the summits, the conferences, the trade shows that we do um, as, as we go on. Next. So these are the basically main five strategies that we have in, uh, in the association. Um, I do not want again to bore you with each of this strategy, but maybe if I can go, we can go to the next slide. Okay, you can just, oh, okay, just stop there. Go back, go back again. Back, 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 okay, stop there. 
because there, there's an animation there. <laughs> okay, so you can see the, the, the chart there. I, I actually wanted you to guess what are the components of the emission, yeah? This is in uh, events. Uh, the survey has been done in France. So all events, and they, they categorize the events, and as you can see, the dark green color represents the biggest emission for each of that event. Most probably you can guess lah, what is the biggest emission in business events, right? And I think the answer is travel. So if you look at the, uh, click next. Yeah, so you can see travel basically makes up to about 65 to 70% of emission. Okay, this is in France, but we can actually extend it to any other countries as well. All right, and then you have space, productions, energy, accommodation. All right, let's go to the next one. So if we take out travel, we take out accommodation. All right, so guess what would be the biggest emission category? For example, in corporate events, you'll see the light blue there, right? What would be the biggest there? Corporate event. It's very different than exhibitions or conferences. What do we normally consume in corporate events? Exactly, food. FMB is the biggest there. And FMB contributes a lot in terms of waste and energy. But as opposed to your exhibitions and congresses, you would see that the lighter uh, green color, which is more on the productions, the materials, the booth, yeah, all the stands that you built. So you can go next. So those are basically the uh, sort of like the emission categories that are being produced by business events. Okay, next. So as, as, as an association, um, as Nigel mentioned as well, um, we are in the process of educating, uh, developing the right framework to ensure our members are aware. Um, it's a bit challenging uh, to tell you simply because there are so many different types of companies in our association. So being a green or a sustainable company is very different than having a green event. Because what we are measuring as a company does not translate into measuring that event. Right, so there are two things here. Because your company can be sustainable, but the event that you're organizing might not be. It's the same as a venue or a building can be a green building, right? But if you're not practicing the green SOPs, the processes, it might not be sustainable. So event has this challenge, and this is something that we have to encourage our members to be uh, more proactive, yeah, to collaborate with other partners. Um, and a lot of things that are being done right now, and the three things that we are focusing right now, if you can go to the next slide. Um, okay, next, I'm just going to jump ahead to this, which is the development of own green event framework. So this is something that is currently being undertaken where we are engaging uh, the academia yeah, and also the industry player to identify how best to rate this event in our country. Because you used to have five star, four star, three star hotels, right? But have we seen a five star event? I mean a green event? It's not easy, but if you can do something like that, it can be good for the country. It can be good to get more suppliers to be involved in the green procurement processes. So this is a process that we are trying to do. And then we are relying a lot on this framework that has been done by the Net Zero Carbon Events Initiative. So if you haven't heard about that, this is actually a global initiative. Um, it is headquartered in Dublin uh, in UK. So what they do is we have a lot of these experts providing ideas and have chart the right way, the roadmap on how we're going to achieve half of net zero, meaning half of carbon reduction by 2030. And of course, we're going to go, by, we're going to go to net zero by 2050. So the framework, the roadmap is there. It's just a matter of how we're going to leverage on that and use their quantitative management in terms of how they measure each of these categories in events and some of the qualitative factors and then start to provide these ratings for each of our business events. Okay? So this is all about alignment with the Global NZCE Initiative and Roadmap. 
All right, my last slide will be this. So how are we going to do that qualitative and quantitative sort of like measurement is based on these nine key indicators. So for any events, yeah, this is still under development. Yeah? So don't take this as a final yet. So the team is currently working on, because each of these categories have a very in-depth calculation in terms of how those waste or energy um, in terms of the carbon uh, emission yeah, is being calculated. So you're looking at your production materials of an event from your logistics, FMB, energy, waste, accommodation, uh, the traveling to and from. Yeah? So um, we, we are looking for customers who are flying in from one side of the world to Malaysia yeah, and the other way around, and also the digital content and communication. And I think what we are doing right now for this particular event is quite interesting because I believe it is in a hybrid format as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, if the organizer is here. If it is in a hybrid format, does it mean it is more sustainable? Hmm. Could be. But actually, in that digital content and communication, this is where you are calculating the energy that is being emitted by the servers, by the computers that are accessing this event in hybrid mode, how long it is operating, the cameras. So all of that has emission factor, and all of that is actually contributing to the overall emission of that particular event. So it doesn't mean that being or doing a remote or a hybrid or an online event, it is more sustainable than doing it like us, what we do right now physically. Yeah, so a lot more challenges that we have to uh, undertake to ensure that we can set a right baseline and to ensure we can reduce whatever carbon that we are emitting for any event. So I think the slide that I had to skip earlier was that four hours. So you can go to that. Let's make that my last slide. Sorry about that. So it's all about this. So the recycle thingy is most of the times we talk about recycling, right? But that is the last thing that we should be doing. We have to rethink our approach. Yeah, it's all about rethinking our approach to ensure we do more things sustainably. If that is too hard for us, let's reuse things. Yeah, if that is also too hard, at least we try to reduce certain things that we use. Yeah, we don't need to do or spend a lot or waste a lot of things. And last but not least, yeah, if those things don't work for you, then try to install this habit of recycling. Okay. So thank you very much. I'm just going to hand it over back to Nigel and Ben Magnet to Purnahima. Okay, thank you, Yusno. Uh, one of the key takeaways I got from that was with Yusno's slide on uh, the events uh, is that we do have food later. So in order to make this particular session more sustainable, make sure you finish everything on that buffet table. All right. Uh, so with that now, I would like to uh, hand the mic over to Pan Rahima uh, from the Malaysian Aviation Group. Uh, Rahima, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, I'm in a very difficult position. I'm in between your, your breaks, network breaks, and also the traffic that's waiting for us, for all of us. So to give you a bit of comfort, I only have six slides, one video. It, it's a bit technical, so the technical bit, I'm going to go fast. Uh, uh, okay, and um, uh, let's, let's just start. Um, uh, Nigel and, and you, uh, you know have, have make, shared very good numbers. Uh, uh, the indications on the statistics, 60-70% uh, of the holidays actually the contribution are the travel, the, the travel part. And you can see that airlines are in a very unique business. We make money out of emitting carbon because every time our aircraft take off, that's where the carbon start emitting. So, um, so we need to do certain strategy so that we make a travel green so hence some um, the other puzzle i think in in the supply chain um nigel and you know talk about this so let me just start the first slide basically if you can go is all about what um can go to the next slide it's all about um this is basically our blueprint um we focus on environment social and governance so different different area we have Environment, we are talking about carbon waste, uh, both you know talk about that. Um, social, we talk about community, corporate. Uh, I think Nigel also start uh, talk about that. 
governance is uh, is a is a bit technical where you see that um, sooner or later we need to start actually reporting on our carbon calculation um, bursa is coming out with the guideline sc is coming out with the guideline so they're going to they're going to have actually a reporting and disclosure so all the entire aspect um, as an as a as an organization we are looking into it so um, how we have done our sustainability is that we make sure we align it with United Nations um, Sustainable Goal. We make sure we are also looking into National Energy Roadmap, which was uh, produced last year by PMX, was announced. They are looking into this in totality as a country. So as an organization and also a national career, we want to make sure we align and support government um, uh, policy on this. Next one, I do have a video of what we have done so far. So let's, let's do it, Paul, thank you. In a world where the call for sustainability grows louder each day, Malaysia Aviation Group stands as a beacon of responsibility and innovation. As one of the leading aviation companies in the region, we understand the importance of reducing our carbon footprint and preserving the environment for generations to come. At Malaysia Aviation Group, sustainability is at the heart of everything we do. From ground operations to air travel, we're committed to minimizing our impact on the planet. We're constantly exploring new technologies and methods to make our operations more sustainable. From investing in fuel-efficient aircraft to optimizing flight routes, every decision we make is with climate impact in mind. But our commitment to sustainability goes beyond reducing emissions. We're also dedicated to conserving natural resources and supporting local communities. Through our community outreach programs, we aim to educate and inspire the next generation to care for the environment. By working together, we can create a more sustainable future for all. From the vibrant cities to the pristine rainforests, Malaysia's beauty is worth protecting. And at Malaysia Aviation Group, we're proud to lead the way towards a greener, more sustainable tomorrow. Join us on this journey towards a brighter future Together, we rise to greater heights while treading lightly on the earth. So that's in a world kind, that's kind of sum up part of the initiative we have been doing all this while. So uh, this is the technical bit. I mean, uh, Nigel and both you know mentioned about net zero carbon emissions. So what aviation industry is doing? So we are very regulated uh, industry, very very. So we have very clear direction of what we can and we cannot do. So in, most importantly, we have four levers to decarbonization, which was also seen in the video just now. One is operation efficiency. So the way we plan our flight route, that actually gives us a fuel efficiency. Um, there is buying a new aircraft. New aircraft means new technology that gives sometimes 10 to 15 percent of efficiency in our fuel which actually reduce our carbon emission and number three is actually on sustainable aviation uh, fuel which give the highest impact to us we have an offtake agreement with petronas dagangan we are working with them to actually use sustainable aviation fuel to ensure that we can reduce our carbon emission and the last one is of course is carbon offset where we actually working out, I don't know if you managed to see a PR this morning was issued about a Kwamut project in Sabah, where we are collaborating to offer our passenger a carbon offset project in Malaysia. So you can travel and you can also offset your carbon emission. Next slide is actually on, um, is, is summarizing what I've been telling. So these are all the four levers and what we have done so far. Next slide. Um, this is how we can empower. I mean, when we were discussing how we want to split our, our presentation, this slide basically, how can we actually make sure that our customer is aware on sustain, sustainability? If you see that we have annual reporting done on a yearly basis, where it give a, a, a news of what has been the airline doing on sustainable. We have a lot of social media posting to, to actually um, share about our latest uh, initiatives. Um, one of it, we started from last year, is that passengers are able to offset your travel. So if actually you know that every pax 
uh, you can before your payment page you are able to actually click and offset and those actually it's a very minimal fee and we don't make anything out of it it's just that certain of our corporate client they requested this because certain or big organization if i can mention like microsoft um, apple they they have they have even a better ambition they want to be net zero by 2030 they don't want to be by 2050 they're very ambitious organization and all their duty travel need to be offset so when they select an an airline they want an airline which have a program for them to offset if not they don't fly so hence that was the push for us to actually work together with a um, Malaysian based project to ensure that you are able to fly and you are able to also offset your travel. It's one way to make it green. So the other options that we have, you see, we have carbon offset. We have actually uh, changed certain of our items. I'm going to see, I'm going to share with you the challenges that we have if you do biogradable items. And the last one, if you are business class onward, you are actually traveling into full EV car from the terminal building to your satellite actually on the field. So this is another collaboration that we give uh, to make sure your travel is green. Next slide is the last slide I have is the challenges. Uh, this is in support. If you see that sometimes when you do certain initiatives, due to public awareness, our consumer awareness, our traveler awareness, they feel that we are cutting costs, we are they they don't see from the sustainable perspective as simple as changing we on my side i'm, I'm doing sustainability for the group we are being pressured like when you are removing plastic from board we had a sustainability day where nick nazmi the yb nick nazmi and he said that i'm putting a challenge to all of you rachel you was there i'm putting a challenge to malaysia airlines management team to remove plastic bottles from the board and one of the most expensive thing for us to remove is actually the plastic bottle because it times five from our current price. It's so expensive to have a Tetra Pak mineral water on board. And uh, we, change, uh, 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 we change our cutlery to wooden, but cust certain customers don't look. I mean, this is the challenges that we are facing. Sometimes we have to do something biogradable, sustainable to be, but one is the price, but also the perception. We are one world member, so sometimes we do share our experience with other airline. Even in Asia, uh, certain airlines say they actually change uh, food into a box container, a, a, a paper, it's like a paper cup and it was backlashed so badly. Within three weeks of trial, they have to put it back into the normal tray. So you see that our part of the region still require a lot of awareness and telling why we are doing this. We have to remove plastic. What is the reason? So that's how I think we, all the supply chain in the travel industry need to work closely to educate our, our consumer that why we are doing this. So I think this is my last slide. I mean, we have, th those are the constraints that, that the challenges that we are facing. And I'm sure that in our entire supply chain, that's something that uh, we are looking into it. Yeah, I do have one last slide. It's how we can work together. So, Nigel, you, you mentioned just now about cultural biodiversity. This is how I think we want to promote uh, sustainability uh, from, from the eye of our customer so that you can see from that perspective. So we should have some green packages together uh, to make your entire journey net zero. So you don't actually produce whatever that you, pro whatever that you emit, you actually offset back. Yeah, so that's, there's a lot of uh, ways that now I think currently we want to work together, educate our travel agent, educate our consumer that this is something that we need to do to make sure that our entire industry is also sustainable. Yeah, that's my last slide. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Aima. Um, we do have about uh, four or five minutes uh, for any questions, if you may have, uh, from the floor before we practice what we preach and finish everything on that buffet table. Okay. So maybe at this point, uh, ladies and gents, if you have any questions for any of the, the panelists here.
I'm AT from University of Malaya. I do tourism study, though I'm trained as an architect and an urban designer. But I, a lot of my research is related to tourism. Um, I'm intrigued with all the speakers' information, and I was just wondering, because we have all these indicators and benchmarking that you have uh, already and shared with all the wonderful statistics, but those are basically indicators mostly related to something that is tangible. How, have there been thoughts or discussions on your side on how uh, we can tap in s sources and feedbacks on the intangible parts of tourism? Because at the end of the day, Everybody knows when we go for travel, when we go for trips, is the memory that we want to take back. Is you know we want to say, oh, I love this city, I love this country because of this certain reasons. I went to this conference and I love this conference because of that. It's for an end user. We're not really concerned so much on how much dollars and cents the organizer is saving, but it's the memory that we bring back. So in terms of that, how do you guys look at that in that certain that point of view? And also taking into consideration, okay, whilst we are doing this for us, like we're saving our, con our resources and all that, but how will the other end take? Like for example, a, a bad, a pretty bad review was given to the Paris Olympics by the um, athletes themselves because they were given this so-called sustainable bed, which was made from cardboards. Remember? I think everybody saw the a lot of complaint coming in. So whilst Paris is trying to walk their talk, as because they, you know, they did the summit. <laughs> but at the end of the day, as the end user, well, who's supposed to be there as their guest, because they're athletes, in a way, they are the guests, and they, you know, are not enjoying themselves. So those are the things I think, when they bring back that memory and they complain on the internet, so I think that's like the damage con must is done already, right? Uh, so that's the thing that, Perhaps I'd like to hear some response from you all. Thank you for the question. Um, I think it's directly linked to the second last slide. So it is is um, is on on our side. I was look into it as the awareness uh, of the passengers that we have, uh, and also the way that we look into uh, sustainability from our side. I think we. On our part, we are still look sustainability is the business um, work related, and I don't think so. We uh, our our part is still ready to actually embed that into our holiday. Like you mentioned, that you are just uh, spoiling my holiday by 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 offering all these sustainable uh, products um, that we have. So we encounter the same uh, every time we introduce something new. Um, I think airline on the other side also are actually facing the same, except for certain part of the region where the consumer are fully aware the impact of those items. So I think it's very important for the entire supply chain to work together with government to educate our people the implication of following the practice that we do. Um, Sometimes it requires certain penalty. Uh, if I can share, Malaysia started in Selangor started charging twenty cent per plastic for any grocery. So first it was education free. Please bring your own bag. Then they start charging the twenty cent. But I'm sure that after a few years it should increase to certain amount, which is so prohibitive. Let's say five to ten per plastic bag just because you want to let people know that this is not sustainable anymore if we want our kids to enjoy this we should be stopping certain things so i would say that that approach um to education 
and awareness to our consumer is important. Hi, I'm Susie. I've traveled a lot of times on Malaysian airlines, but not the other airlines, because of uh, basically <laughs> no, because I can you know uh, hop on to or rather check in through KL Central and all that. Now, perhaps to add on to your uh, you know to your part on the sustainability, but you no, know, normally when you walk in or when the plane was about to take off, you, you have a video on safety measures. Perhaps you can have a video on you know what are the steps that Malaysian M A M A G is taking. Uh, in this sustainability program and shows now we're using not plastic spoons but this you know for the future blah 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 thank you very good idea I and mean, we are looking into it totally aligned with you thank you so much yep. maybe if I can add a bit to your questions I agree with you in terms of the gradual changes uh, in events specifically the challenge is not to implement changes drastically and the problem with events mainly is that you don't have a baseline of how much emission you are emitting. So what you are seeing is just uh, activities where you think would drive sustainability. So what you do is you cut serving water bottles, right? but you are not measuring that. Right? So what we are doing in line with net zero carbon events is that you need to establish a baseline for every event and then start looking at what would be your next event's emission how much you're going to reduce, 10% from that amount. So that is, I mean, that is how you start uh, gradually reducing your emission towards net zero. That's number one. The other thing is that um, sustainability is not just about um, emission. <laughs> right? We have a lot of other things and we are promoting a lot of legacy events. So a lot of the things that we do have a lot of CSR components in that. So this is where the memories will come in as well. So you have these post-events, post-conferences things that we do together as a community, right? To help build this uh, playground curve for this community, again, to help uh, give back to, of course, a lot of things that we have seen people do is planting trees, right? <laughs> it has become so common nowadays. Again. But there are many other ways that you can make events that you attend, business events, memorable by leaving these legacies and not just to take shortcuts as in implementing uh, something that, okay, I just want to show that we are not using carpets anymore for the show, but you are not telling people how much you're saving from that activities. So this is something that I think we have to start looking at from now. Okay, uh, yes, we have a question over there. That, that table needs to get extra allowance at the buffet table, because we've got, yeah, all the questions, yeah, boleh tambah lagi, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm Yuan Mei, I'm a consultant. Um, there was one work I worked for, is uh, Asian Development Bank. And then in the context of Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand, IMTGT, they particularly have a sustainable tourism plan. So since uh, she talked about the, she asked about the challenges, but I would like to ask what are the success factor when there is an implementation works? Uh, with a uh, corporate actor as well as acceptable for the consumers or the people. Uh, such as, uh, would you mind to uh, share your experience as a private uh, corporate uh, sector with the government in terms of policy engagement? How, what, what, are the, what are the factors that you will consider that policy work for you? What, what is the success factor that should have in the implementation that make it work? Thank you. Thank you so much. Great question. I was, I will, I'll just sum it up so fast because um, that's exactly what happened to us. We are very young unit in Malaysia Airlines, only three years old. And the one reason that we accelerate all our program is because we have our top management to fully support our program and walk the talk. I mean, a few of you have heard. So our board was fully supportive of this program and our senior management team, the moment they hear all this reporting and we need to do this, they were fully support and we were able to actually do all our programs and implementation uh, in a fast pace, I would say. So I think to have your top management, especially for private sector, to have fully support the program is very, very, and one of the most key important success factor for this program. Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly just sum it up. 
and then if you have any more questions for the panelists, we'll be around for a bit. So this is meant to be an open networking session, mix, mingle, have a chat, you know, exchange experiences and ideas. Uh, but I think I'm probably just going to round up this conversation by saying that for us, uh, especially uh, travel agents and tour operators, we're very sensitive to the human touch points, right? Uh, that's the nature of our business. And I think one of the very important components in uh, you know, uh, supporting uh, the various sustainability initiatives is how we touch the people whose uh, livelihoods are going to be affected by this. So while we can say that we're going to educate customers, we're going to educate suppliers, we already have a vested interest in doing that. The question is going to be, how do we impact the ones that are right down at the bottom? All right, The bottom is a terrible thing to say. But right down at the base, the people who are going to be delivering those services, delivering those products, if we touch their hearts well enough, if they are vested in this journey and the idea of being sustainable, eventually, I believe personally, that the consumer as time goes by, maybe even quicker than expected, will also come to recognize that the benefits that these people are experiencing. So part of that very, very crucial journey is making sure that all our human touch points, whether it's in our organizations or the people whose livelihoods we're going to affect, you know, uh, has, that, uh, um, has that impact, all right? And from there, perhaps our sustainability journey will be a lot easier. Right. So ladies and gents, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate your presence. Uh, please do stay. Uh, we're looking forward to having that chat with you over the next half hour or so. So thank you very much. And thank you, panelists.